do you know the main reason why you're going through the battles you're going through right now? Maybe battles in addiction, maybe marital problems, financial problems, mental problems. You're going through battles in your mind, uh, intrusive thoughts. One of the main reasons why you go through those battles every single day is because of God's choosing. God put his eyes on you. And I'm not talking about when you're born. Before you were even created, God chose you. Look what it says in John chapter 15, verse 16. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I chose you that you should bear fruit and that your fruit should remain and that whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will give to you. Look at that. One of the main reasons why God's anointed chosen ones are under attack is because God himself has called you out. Do you remember the story of Jonah? Well, you got to remember in, in Jonah, he was already in his calling. He had been chosen. He was a prophet. But one of the things that God wanted to do God wanted to use this man of God to reach out and save more than a hundred to 200,000 heathens. These were cannibals. These were evil hearted people. They worship all type of different gods. They were in and out, left and right, up and down. It said that they didn't even know their left from their right. They were ignorant. They were foolish. They were blinded by sin. And who did God choose? God chose Jonah. The minute that God set his eyes on Jonah and chose him to preach the gospel, to reach out and to save the lost, man, the devil came in, man, with fear and anxiety and worries. And then he wanted to pull up the bitterness because Jonah had some family members that had been killed by these Ninevites. Man, and what did Jonah do? What you and me do? We run. I remember when, when I was born, my father told me that when I was born in the hospital, that he lifted me up. He took me to the window of the hospital and he lifted me up high in the air. And he said, Lord, Lord, out of all my children, this one, Lord, this one is going to serve you. And you know what? From the minute that I start actually thinking my own thoughts, you know what I was always thinking about running from God. I went through drug addiction. I went through alcoholism. I went through jail cells. I went through broken relationships. I went through depression, through anxiety, through fear, financial problems. Man, it just seemed like all hell was breaking loose in my life. And why me? How come my other brothers and siblings didn't have to go through that? How come my sisters didn't have to go through that? How come it seemed like some people in the church, they didn't have to go through the things that I was going through? Why me? The reason why was because of God's calling in my life. In 2013, I finally made a decision to stop running from God, just like Jonah. I stopped running from God and I submitted myself to the Lord. And this is something you're gonna have to do. You can run, but you've heard the saying, you can run, but you can't hide. The reason that you're going through so many battles in your life you might be addicted, it might be pornography, it might be cigarettes, it might be alcohol, it might be drugs, it might be different relationships that are never successful, it might be bad relationships that are, that are toxic for you. It, there's so many things that the devil is gonna try to place in your path so that you will not answer the calling of God. But the reason why God's anointed ones are always under attack was because in, in the book of Isaiah, God says this, that he has chosen you to be his battle ax. His battle ax. And the reason why he says battle ax was not a physical battle ax, but he was talking about breaking the hearts of hardened hearts. There's so many people in our world right now that are lost. And you know where they're going? They're going straight into the pits of hell. Now God has chosen you for eternal life. God has given you the gift of eternal life. You have Jesus. You have the precious presence of his Holy Spirit living inside of you. And you know what he wants to do? He wants to shut your mouth. He wants you to close your eyes. He wants you to stop your ears. He wants you to say, Lord, I'm not willing to make that sacrifice. I'm not willing to walk that second mile. I'm not willing to go out and evangelize. I'm not willing to go preach to the, the gospel to the lost souls. That's not me. I don't want to be a part of that. I just want to live a normal life. But you don't have a normal life. God has chosen you for something more. And the reason why your, your finances are being attacked, the reason why your marriage is being attacked, the reason why the devil creeps into the household and tries to attack the lives of your children so that they are suffering, is because of the anointing of your life. That anointing is something precious. 
It's an anointing of your holy, of the Holy Spirit. The anointing means this, the presence of God inside of you and all outside of you, all over you. There's many times I've been walking the streets evangelizing and I walk past the presence and say, hey son, I don't know what you're doing, but I feel the presence of God in your life. You know what a precious thing that is? There's many people that I've walked up to that were full of discouragement, full of hopelessness, full of doubt, full of fear. And I begin to speak God's word to them. And I seen the light of God's hope open their eyes and they receive the hope of Jesus and they continue to run the race. That's what God wants you to do. God has called you to be the savior of your household. There's many people in your house right now, in your life right now, people that you love that are not saved. What happens? What happens if they die? They're going to go to hell. Is that, is, that, is that something that is valuable to you? Is that something that, that you want God to do in your life? Hey, look, God, I'm scared. I don't know if I, if, I, if I finally throw away the world, if I finally just, you know, turn my back on the world and, and, and finally dedicate my life to you, Lord. I don't know what it's going to look like a year from now. I don't know what dedicating myself to Christ is really going to feel like. I'm, I'm scared of the future. I'm scared of, of jumping in the waters, Lord. Can I tell you something? One of the first things that God is going to do when you finally say, Lord, I surrender, is the peace of God that surpasses human understanding is going to fall in your life. When I finally submitted to the Lord and I finally dedicated my life to the Lord, man, God's peace, man, just poured down in my life. And I understood that I was in my calling that I was in the purpose of why God created me. And that was to preach the gospel. That was to be a testimony. This YouTube uh, channel is nothing but uh, an opportunity to God open. But I've been doing this for 11 years, preaching the gospel, being a testimony. I'm just putting a camera on it now. But this is something that God has instilled in my life. But for years, years, I was running from it. And I know, I know you can relate to what I'm talking about. I know that this resonates in your life. And I want you to know this. God is calling you. God is calling you out. You remember the story of Elijah? Elijah was a man that loved God. He respected God. And God said, look, I'm going to use you to bring my people Israel out of this, this stoop they're in, out of this slumber they're in. They were beginning to worship different idols, Baal and Asherah, and instead of worship the living God. So one day Elijah challenges challenges the, the, the worshipers of Baal. He challenges Jezebel and all of all of her prophets. And, and it's a showdown between, between God and the devil, between Elijah and Jezebel and all the prophets. And you know what? Elijah prayed and said, God, please, Lord, bring down fire. Show your people that you're for them. Show your people that you love them. And you know what? God brought down fire, burnt up a sacrifice. And you know what happened? Elijah in that day killed over 450 prophets of Baal. It was a humongous victory. It was a mighty victory. It was something that you know, hey, only God could have done this in my life. But the very next day, Jezebel writes a letter anointed by Satan himself. And I want you to know this. I know that the devil tries to write you those letters in your mind. Letters in your mind that, that you know what, the minute you sacrifice and surrender your life to God and walk in your anointing and walk in your purpose, that the devil's going to destroy you, that the devil's going to come against your family. He's going to come against your children. He's going to come against your peace, that you're going to, you're going to, you're going to sacrifice all this fun and all these blessings to live a life of picking up your cross every day. Don't do it. Well, Jezebel sent a letter like that and said, I'm going to take your head off the same way you kill my prophets. I'm going to kill you. And you know what Elijah did? His heart was filled with fear. His heart was filled with anxiety because that's our humanity. We don't really understand God and how God uses us, why God wants to use us in God's protection plan and God's blessing in our life. We just, in our own understanding, we just get lost in that. And Elijah, instead of running to God and understanding, hey God, you just gave me the victory. You gave me the power and the anointing to kill over 450 prophets. You know what? I'm going to believe in you for protection from this demonic, satanic spirit. He ran and he got so depressed that he asked God to kill him. He, he had a, a suicidal spirit that was attached to his life and he was running. 
He said, I don't even want to do this anymore. I'm the only one trying to serve you, God. What did God do? God took him to a mountain and he put on a show. He said, man, he, he sent a big earthquake, but it said that, that, that God was not in the earthquake. And then he sent a fire in a hailstorm, but God was not in the firestorm. Then he sent a strong wind that shook up the mountains and shook up the stone, but God was not there. And then a small, still voice spoke, Elijah, Elijah, get back up. I want, I want you to know this, that God is speaking to you right now. And he's telling you, get back up. God loves you with the unconditional love and God called you. God didn't call everybody else around you. God called you. Why did God call you? I don't know. But that's God's business, not your and mine. You just know this. You have been called and anointed and chosen to preach the gospel, to be a soul winner, to be a light in the darkness, but to be a city set upon a hill, to be that salt of the earth that brings flavor to people that have no hope, no peace, no joy, no salvation. You're the one that God has chosen. And whoever God chooses, God backs up. Wherever God chooses, God provides for. I want you to know this. Stop running. He told Elijah, listen, get up. He didn't, he didn't coddle him. He didn't give him a hug and pat his back and say, it's going to be all right, Elijah. Don't worry. No. He said, get up. There's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of work to do. There's people that need to be saved. Go anoint the next king. Go anoint the next prophet. Keep on working in the work that I called you to do. And that's what God is speaking to you. He's not here to coddle you. He's not here to pat your back. He's telling you, get up. I called you for a purpose. Get up. Continue following the Lord. Continue serving God. Continue being a testimony. Continue preaching the gospel. You are anointed for this. You are chosen for this. Why do God's chosen ones always get attacked? because he's afraid of you. He's afraid of the reason that God called you because God wants to use you. And it says in Jeremiah 29, 11, that the plans that God has for you are amazing plans. I hope this video has been a blessing to you. I hope it's encouraged you to keep running the race, to keep fighting the fight. And if you're not a subscriber, do me a favor, subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you hit that bell and turn on all those notifications. Because every time you turn on those notifications, Every time I drop a video, you'll be one of the first ones encouraged. And also, if you made it this far in the video, right here in the comments below, I want you to, I want you to write this. I've been chosen by God. Write it down. I've been chosen by God. And before you leave, do me a humongous favor. Make sure you press that like button. Because every time you press that like button right here, look, it pushes the video forward so that other people can hear the word and they need to be encouraged too. And before you leave, check out some of these other videos. Man, I know that they're going to be a blessing to you. God bless you. You have a great day.